Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel Physics Sergi and here we are in Pathfinder Solution Series and the topic of magnetism and this is check your understanding problem number six. It was a long pending problem because I've already taken up a AITS select series question in which I did discuss multiple methods of solving a particle moving in electric and magnetic field. Okay, so if at all it results in a cycloidal path, I've given you three methods in that particular video and I gave this as a practice problem for one of the methods. So this this is the video I was trying to talk about. So just in case you want to have a look at this particular video, which I would insist because all the methods that are there uh, to solve this particular problem have been discussed in that particular video. The link is in the description below or in the I button above. So it's a very nice little problem with four uh, multiple choice options and uh, the particle was uh, moving in a magnetic and uh, gravitational field and I have discussed the usual Cartesian coordinate system method and then the rolling disk analogy to uh, ensure that the problem gets solved quicker and even much quicker by using the field transformation technique which is slightly out of J's syllabus but it's a nice technique which can shorten your solutions okay and also gives you um, a, a very good introduction to the topic which you would face in higher level physics courses okay so let's move ahead and see the formal wording of the question from the pathfinder. A charged particle starts sliding down a frictionless slope of inclination theta in presence of a horizontal uniform and static magnetic field of induction B directed perpendicularly into the plane of the figure and uniform gravitational field of the earth. The intensity of gravitational field is G. After sliding an unknown distance L, as you could see in the figure, the particle leaves the slope and follows a cycloidal trajectory right, as expected because there is magnetic and gravitational field. If on the trajectory, maximum vertical displacement of the particle from end to end is H, find the value of this unknown distance L, it had slid on the slope, angle theta is also given. So the expected answer obviously dimensionally is in terms of H and theta alone, and you cannot use the value of B or G because using B or G, you would be uh, not getting the dimensions of length. Okay, so that's the initial idea. If you want to have a try, please do give it a try. And uh, don't expect me to solve again using all the three methods. So you want all the three methods of solving this one, please, as I said, go to this particular video. The link is in the description below or in the I button. So please uh, help yourself with that and then only come back. I'll be taking in this problem only only the field transformation technique which is least discussed so it will try to it will give you answer much more quicker okay i hope you have done that uh, watch this video i'm going ahead with the solution using field transformation technique so as i have discussed in the previous video itself right there are um, two stages first stage is common for any of the three methods you need to know at what point the contact is lost. I think losing contact is nothing but normal reaction being zero for this particle after sliding through distance L, right? So at, in the normal direction, the value of the mg cos theta should be balanced by the magnetic force, which is QBU, right? Where U is the speed at which it loses contact, let's suppose, okay? So I have written down the value of that U in terms of these parameters. I boxed it because I'll be using this in the stage two of my calculation. Also, we know that using work energy theorem, right, I get that confidence because as it slides through this distance L, only the work doing force is the gravitational field, right? Because magnetic force and normal reaction will not do any work because they are perpendicular to the displacements. So MGL sine theta work done by gravity should be increased in kinetic energy up till here, starting from rest. So half mu square, you'll get this. So these are the two relations of U versus mg and uh, theta and here u versus g and again a theta will be useful in my next set of calculations okay right let's move to the stage two when it has already lost contact now with respect to ground frame the person has seen a cycloidal path after it loses contact okay now what i'll do in order to ensure this cycloidal path can be converted to a circular path we need to ensure that the gravitational field is cancelled. How do you do that? You can move with respect to a frame in rightward direction. Let's say a velocity of V0, you choose that velocity in such a way that the particles mg vector in the downward direction gets cancelled by a QE field vector that would be generated due to the motion of the frame. Okay, remember in 
actual ground frame, there is no electric field in the question. But the transformed electric field can be found out as V0 cross B bar as discussed in the previous video, where you choose V0 such that you can move with any speed, right, towards right, but you move with that particular speed so that the value of the transformed field force QE in the upward direction cancels the mg. Then what happens? Then the charged particle in this frame feels like it is only under the action of a, a magnetic field. And we all know whenever magnetic field and velocity are perpendicular to each other, it executes a circular motion. So please understand in the moving frame, this vertical width doesn't change, right? If you move towards right, the width in the vertical direction shouldn't change. So whatever H the ground frame observer sees will be seen by the moving frame observer as the diameter of that circular motion. Okay, right. So in that moving frame, the particle executes circular motion so that Q is mg. Therefore, I'll substitute value of E as V naught B. Okay, because V naught is towards right and B is perpendicular. So cross product is direct product. And I would be judging the choice of the velocity as V naught is mg by Q QB. This is the third box that I'll borrow. So already two relations I got in the previous page for losing contact and work energy theorem. And this is the V naught for the choice of the frame of reference velocity. Okay. And we all should be knowing that the radius of the circular motion in that relative frame should be m into speed of the relative thing. That means, uh, as seen by this rightward observer, a combination of the actual speed u and this v0 vector results in a u relative, which will govern the radius of the circle. So this is something we know. So using these three important relations, let me go back. The box here, the box here, and the box here. I'll borrow all the three boxes into the third page and I'll try to manipulate them. Okay, our agenda is to eliminate all the unknowns in, our, in order to get the value of L. Okay, so you start with this, you see this is mg by qb into cos theta. This was from, remember, um, um, normal reaction equal to zero condition. This was from work energy theorem. And the third one was from the field transformation. And if you carefully observe, we thought because of uh, uh, luck, the mg by qb factor is the same here. So I'll substitute the value of v0 here. Therefore, u, which is the velocity, just by leaving the inclined plane in ground frame, is coming out to be the v0 cos theta in uh, manipulation. So how do you calculate the U relative? Uh, the actual velocity with respect to ground is towards this direction. The person or the frame is moving towards right. So in his frame, he will see relative velocity by subtracting that V naught from U. Okay. And fortunately, the V naught cos theta immediately exactly cancels U because of this relation. So the U relative, which will be in this direction is this component of V naught, which is V naught sine theta. Okay, right. And therefore, the value of R that I got in the previous case, which is mu relative by QB, I substitute the value of u relative by squaring it. The reason for squaring is because of the square here. Okay, now same u v0 cos theta, I substitute here and I end up getting. So these are the two relations in which the v0, which I chose, remember, it's not given in the question, had to be eliminated. So the best way to do that is to square this further. Reason I'll tell you, there is a QB by M here, which I will again be looking at this v0, right? So I'll eliminate that value, QB by M, I've eliminated. Can you see that v0 square has become v0 power 4 because of the equation 3. So h square by 4, which we know r is h by 2, right? So h square by 4 is equal to this expression and v0 cos theta whole square equal to this expression. We are almost there. So from here to here, you could see there is a v0 power 4 that I need to do, right? So even though this is square, you square this one further to get the v0 power 4 and divide it with this equation and eliminate the value of v0. So after all those multiple squares and everything, only surviving factors would be the H and L and a theta. And you take the square root of everything, you end up getting this expression that's given in the answer book. Okay, so I think you should understand that most important part, even though it looks three pages, that is for me to explain, it's actually only single step solution of being able to transform this particular cycloidal motion into a circular motion using this technique, which I actually also explained in this problem in the past. Okay, right. So that's the best way to
to solve this problem according to me instead of the usual Cartesian system. Okay, right. I hope you have liked this uh, video of Pathfinder Solution Series. There are many more Pathfinder Solution Series. Please, the link in, link of the playlist is in the description below or in the i button above. And also, the rest of the workout series, Olympiad, AITS, and Result series are also running parallel in this channel. So please do check out all these links of the playlists are in the description below. Please do read through the description, and it's a worth your while kind of videos that would be there okay so please do like give a like to this video in case you have uh, gained something out of it which i am pretty sure you did and please do share it with your peer groups in whatsapp and telegram try to bring in more subscribers it would be very motivating for me to continue with this qual quality content okay so thank you for showing confidence in me and staying this long and see you in the next video